Good morning, friends. Pastor Jesse here at Pequay Evangelical Church in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, where we exist to help you know and follow Jesus. One of the ways that we do that is through what you're participating in right now, which is our daily read-through of Scripture. We just take a chapter of Scripture, we read it together, word by word, verse by verse, and then at the end, I share an insight or two that the Holy Spirit highlighted for us as we read. And we do that to equip you and encourage you to be in God's Word daily for yourselves. This is not the, your daily dose of God's Word, these videos. This is to equip you to be in God's Word for yourself. And the reason that we do that is because Jesus himself tells us in John chapter 15 that there is no better way to be disciple, that there's no better way to grow in him, to know and follow him, than to be in his word daily for yourself. He says, if we store his word away in our hearts, then we're going to bear fruit in him. So we encourage you, we equip you to do that through these read-throughs of scripture. Right now, we're almost at the very end of our read-through of the book of Acts. We're all the way back in Acts chapter 27, so I invite you to open up your Bible or your devices there as I read, as has been our practice from the English Standard Version, Acts chapter 27. Would you read and follow along with me? And when it was decided that we should sail for Italy, they delivered Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort named Julius. And embarking in a ship of the Adriatium, which was about to sail to the ports along the coast of Asia, we put to sea accompanied by Archippus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica. And the next day we put in at Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly and gave him leave to go to his friends and be cared for. And boating out to sea from there, we sailed under the lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. And when we had sailed across to the open sea along the coast of Sicily and Pamphylia, we came to Myra and Leo Laodicea. There in the centurion found the ship of Alexandria sailing for Italy and put us on board that. We sailed slowly for a number of days and arrived with difficulty off Sindus. And as the wind did not allow us to go further, we sailed under the lee of Crete off Salome. Coasting along it with, with difficulty, we came to a place called Fair Havens, near which was the city of Lycia. Since much time had passed and the voyage was now dangerous because even the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Sirs, I perceive that the voyage will be with injury and much loss, not only of cargo and the ship, but of also of our lives. But the centurion paid no attention to the pilot and the owner of the ship than what Paul said. And because the harbor was not suitable to spend the winter in, the majority decided to put out to sea from there and on chance that somehow we could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, facing both southwest and northwest, and spend the winter there. Now when the south wind blew gently, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, they weighed anchor and sailed along Crete, close to the shore. As soon as tempest winds called the northeaster struck down from the land, when the ship was caught and could not face north, we gave way to it and were driven along. Running under the lee of a small island called Cauda, we managed with difficulty to secure the ship's boat. After hoisting it up, we they used supports to undergird the ship. Then, fearing that they would run aground on Sutris, they lowered the gear, and thus they were driven along. Since we were violently storm-tossed, they began the next day to jettison the cargo. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest lay on us, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul stood up amongst them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have set sail from Crete and incurred this injury and loss. Yet now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of God to whom I belong and to whom I worship. And he said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar, and behold, God has granted to all those who sail you with you life. So take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we must run aground on some island. When the fourteenth night had come, and as we were being driven across the Adagric Sea, about midnight the sailors suspected that they were nearing land. So they took the sounding and found twenty-four fathoms. A sounding and found twenty-four fathoms. A little further on, they took a sounding again and found 15 fathoms. And fearing that we might run on the rocks, they let down the four anchors and the stern and prayed for day to come. And as the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship and had lowered the ship's boat into the sea under the pretense of laying out anchors for the bow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the ship's boat and let it go. As day was about to dawn, Paul urged them all to take some food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day that you have continued in suspense and without food have been taking nothing. Therefore I urge you to take some food, for it would give you strength, for not a hair is to perish from the head of any of you. 
And when he had said these things, he took bread and giving thanks to God in the presence of all, broke it and began to eat. Then they all were encouraged and ate some food amongst themselves. We were all, and there were, we were in all 276 persons in the ship. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship, throwing out the wheat into the sea. Verse 39. Now, when it was day, they did not recognize the land, but they recognized the bay with the beach on which they planned, if possible, to run the ship ashore. So they cast off the anchor and left them in the sea. At the same time, loosening the ropes, they tied the rudders. Then hoisting the foresail to the wind, they made for the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the vessel aground. The bow struck and remained immovable, and the stern was being broken up by the surf. The soldiers' was, plan was to kill the prisoners, lest they should swim away and escape. The centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could jump, who could swim to jump aboard, overboard first to make it for land, and the rest on planks or pieces of the ship. And so it was, all were brought to land safely. So, verse number 27, or chapter 27, is a long passage, 44 verses. It's all about the famous shipwreck that Paul and our gospel historian Luke, remember at different points we pointed this out as our study, Luke, our gospel historian who writes the book of Luke and the book of Acts, he is here, he is saying we, he is actively participating in the action here. We have a first-hand account of this mesmerizing shipwreck that takes place. And what happens here? is at the beginning of the chapter, Paul says, hey, we shouldn't, we shouldn't sail. We, we are not going to make it to our destination. Winter is coming, which means rough seas are coming. We are not going to make it. Paul has that sense from the Holy Spirit that, that we're not going to make it. He shares that sense, but the captain of the ship ignores it. And he pushes on, and exactly what Paul predicts happens. A great storm comes on. The ship is blown and tossed by the sea. They spend over 14 days wandering around the sea thinking and fearing for their lives that, that they are not going to make it but paul in the midst of this has a vision sees an angel the lord that promises that he that paul's purpose is to go to rome stand before caesar proclaim the gospel as we've talked about talk, spoken about and that because of this his life and the life of the 276 people as luke notes that are on board this ship they will all be spared if they remain and from this point forward do as paul as guided by the holy spirit says and so they actually do that they listen to paul's guidance they they find shore they run the ship uh, aground uh, the ship is torn apart the ship is destroyed as was predicted but each person whether they're able to swim to shore by their own power or they have to use planks or pieces of wood to get to land they are able to get to land and they are spared what a great story of the faithfulness of God and how we see this clear illustration. We can read this passage and be like, what is this teaching us about God? But what it's teaching us is that God's plans truly never fail. That the sinfulness of man, that the rebellion of man, that the pride of man to not listen to wise counsel, that will not, that will never stop the plans of God. God's plans were for Paul to go to Rome and preach the gospel to, to Caesar and the leaders of Rome. And God's plan would not be Thwarted. He would go to Rome and he would preach the gospel there. Not a shipwreck of any kind was going to stop that from taking place. And thanks be to God in the midst of that, God also spared the lives of 276 people as they were in a shipwreck and run aground. Thanks be to God for his word. And let's apply this truth to our lives and know that whatever God promises, God will bring to fruition. God will bring to light no matter how unlikely it may seem in our circumstances. May God bless the rest of your day. May you join us next time as we close out our reading.